let's write the mechanism and the products from this reaction. At least, let's write the part of the mechanism that we've learned, and then we can go to the product. Are you supposed to take one from the more substituted? Does the more substituted go towards the oxygen, or does it go? Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. which the arrows go. I'm sure it does. In this case, it, it turns out are, not to matter. Triangle anyway, yeah. so it's all connected to one. In this case, it turns out not to matter. You're basically asking whether the regiochemistry matters. In this case, the regiochemistry doesn't matter because we're just adding an oxygen to both carbons, so it doesn't really matter which way you think of the carbons as attacking. It sounds like you were asking, should you have the arrows going clockwise or counterclockwise here? And because this is a cycle, and because these are both oxygens, you'll get the same exact product, whether you draw the arrows going clockwise or counterclockwise. So it turns out that that's not an issue here. These are the two products. Does it matter if we don't include the H? Or should we just show that like... Yeah, you would get full credit whether you show the H or not. However, it's probably a good practice here to show the H so that you're really thinking through the stereochemistry. But because it's a hidden hydrogen, technically you don't have to put it in. But I think that would be a good practice here to put that in. And we should have two different products because the oxygens could have come in from in front or from behind. But either way, they have to be sick because they're coming in from the same osmium tetroxide. And then we have to ask whether these are the same or different. These are pretty clearly different over here. And the main reason they're different is that the molecule is asymmetrical. It's got the methyl up here and the hydrogen down here. There's no way that we could lay one of these pictures on the other. So we would have to draw both of these. Um, we don't need to know how the oxygens get the two hydrogens from the H2Os. That's right. They didn't cover that in the textbook. And I doubt that your instructor requires you to know that. That's right. Unless he specifically said so in the lecture, I would not think that they'd want you to know that. You should know this first step of the mechanism, but I'd be pretty surprised if they wanted you to know the second step. So for the second step, we should just say, presto, they've turned into alcohols. They've turned into alcohols with retention of configuration. We need to memorize that if you start with the oxygens on wedges, here they're on wedges. And if you start with them on dashes, here they're on dashes. This is similar, again, to when we did the hydroboration oxidation. And when we replaced the boron with an alcohol group, 
We didn't say what the mechanism was. Actually, we did briefly look at the mechanism for that, but we don't usually draw the mechanism that replaces the boron with the OH, but we do need to have memorized that it does that with retention of configuration. So this is retention of configuration two. Here's another example of the syn dihydroxylation. Now we should also see that there's also a way to, another way to do dihydroxylations. We should learn that at the same time, the alternative method for dihydroxylation. You ready for that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you.